Let's turn now to the thorny subject of climate change. We've been telling you this morning that the White House has announced that President Obama will now attend the crucial final stages of the climate change uh, su summit in Copenhagen. That's led to a uh, belief that perhaps there will be some kind of uh, hard and fast agreement reached for the president to take the time to attend. Well, thousands, though, are expecting to join demonstrations today calling for more action on climate change ahead of the gathering in Copenhagen. Uh, protesters taking to the streets of London, Dublin, Belfast uh, and Glasgow to demand strong action to tackle what they say is a growing problem. The organisers stop climate chaos, demanding that the British government help poorer countries to adapt to climate change. While they're urging rich nations to act first and fastest on bringing CO2 emissions under control, and keeping the temperature increases under two degrees Celsius. In Britain, they say that to meet the objectives, the government must give up its dependence on so-called dirty coal. Well, joining us now from central London is Paul Brannan, who is the head of campaigns at Christian Aid, part of the Stop Climate Chaos Coalition, protesting today. And uh, joining us here too is long-range forecaster and climate change sceptic Piers Corbyn. Good morning to both of you. Um, Piers, first of all, why are you sceptical? Well, there's no evidence that uh, carbon dioxide has any influence on world temperatures or on extreme events. And in fact, ice core data shows the opposite, namely that world temperatures, especially sea temperatures, control carbon dioxide. And that there's no evidence of an increase in extreme events due to carbon dioxide. In fact, with the advances in science we've made at Weather Action, we can predict extreme events and uh, this uh, should be of great value to the world. Paul Brown, what's your reaction to that, that the statistics, the uh, figures just don't add up? Well, we completely disagree with that at Christian Aid, and um, where with the vast majority of scientific evidence from around the world as collated by the United Nations, um, also backed up by the UK's own Met Office, climate change is happening, it's happening quicker than we thought, it's extremely dangerous for us all, rich and poor, but it's the poor people who are already suffering, poor countries already been damaged, that's why Christian Aid, Oxfam, CAFOD, the development agencies out in force today, very concerned about the impact of climate change on the developing world but after climate change has ravaged the developing world it will come for the rich world but are, are you jumping on a political or an eco bandwagon are you actually happy with the science because for instance we got the news today the Met Office is to re-examine 160 years of uh, various uh, climate measurements I think that's a sensible thing to do and they're doing that to be able to come back and to be absolutely categoric with the people who are criticizing the information it just simply isn't worth the risk now OK, so maybe the sceptics possibly, possibly might be right. Is it really worth the risk of us going forward, crossing our fingers, 50-50 chance of there a possibility of devastating climate change? It isn't worth the risk. That said, we believe the scientific evidence is categoric. Climate change is happening, it's man-made. And the evidence from the developing world where we, Christian Aid, are working with poor people is that in places like Kenya, droughts are now not happening once every 10 years as they've done for centuries. They are happening every other year and right. it is already killing poor people. Piers, how would you uh, explain away, if you like, these, these climate problems, these uh, increasing uh, events around the world? Well, they're not increasing. They are naturally occurring events. They go in cycles. The series of floods we've had in, in Britain, for example, also happened 130 years ago. And we can predict these extreme events. And if this man from, Clark, from Christian Aid really cares about the third world, he'd make use of extreme event forecasts to actually save lives. What we have here is failed science resting upon fraudulent, falsified data. Well, who, and the on, inquiry who's, who's, who's shouldn't be just into... Who's falsifying the data? Who's falsified the data? The University of East Anglia were well, we don't trying to know hide... That, there's yes, an investigation we do. underway. Yes, That's a bit of a, a tough assertion No, to they've admitted they were trying to hide the decline in... Well, they haven't admitted that at all. Yes, they have. No, Their they've, own said, words, they've said they will no, launch an inquiry to look into their it. They've own not admitted words they are anything. they were hiding the decline. Now, there's been an, there's an inquiry going into why and what, and that inquiry should be extended to the whole operation around the world of what is known as climate science, which is a self-deluding house of cards and it will collapse. And the third world will suffer because it's, it's climate change policies which are causing them trouble. You see, the 
People in Africa don't need wind farms and solar cells. What they need is money spent to combat malaria, for example, or clean running water. Well, the m money is spent on those things anyway. I think you'd probably uh, agree, Paul Brandon. You, you have cr separate Christian aid uh, initiatives on these other problems. But um, just to touch on the East Anglia issue, because that's very uh, current, are you happy with all the science that's been put there before you and other campaigners? We're happy. We're convinced that the science is right. Alas, we wish it wasn't like this. All the rich countries are also convinced, despite the fact that it's going to make it very difficult for them economically going forward. The British, American, EU governments would be delighted if science, if climate change wasn't happening, if the science was wrong. But they believe it too. And they're also acting. We don't think they're doing enough. We think they should do more. But they clearly believe the scientific evidence as well. The debate is well underway. Well, and the more world to come is cooling in... now. The world is cooling while carbon dioxide goes up. And the global warmers refuse to come to a conference well, in Imperial College in October to justify their case in Piers, front of scientists. Piers, see, we'll have to have leave no it there. Case. They have no case. We'll have to leave it there. But no doubt Copenhagen will address it in detail and we'll see what the experts come up with again. No doubt uh, there'll be some other answers as well. Gentlemen both, thanks very much indeed.